If you're a dinghy sailor, you know the thrill of getting a boat to sail and to move, and also the importance of keeping it light. But if you want to go cruising, space and creature comforts are also important. And that's what this boat today provides. The Spirit of 380 gives us a lightweight platform, but also a performance boat to sail. And the owner, Michael, is going to show us through. Hey, Michael. Hi, Brent. Come on board. So Michael, it's uh, a 2012 Spirited 380? Yes. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about maybe the design? So. I wanted a boat that, that sailed, uh, yeah. and my wife kind of wanted a boat that was more focused on the accommodation. And you're a dinghy sailor, right? Yeah, I'm so. a dinghy sailor, yeah, a skiff sailor. And so I wanted a boat that did actually sail, uh, and sail nicely. And um, I'd be, we looked around a bit, and I decided that the, uh, the Shining the Spirited 380 um, was the reasonable compromise between what my wife wanted and what I wanted. And what did you want? What, what I wanted a boat that when you put the sails up that it sailed nicely and that could actually go into the wind if it needed to. You know? right. Although I'd prefer to be a fair weather sailor most of the time with the wind behind me. Okay. Um, but the other thing was that it was just my wife and I and a 10 year old and so I wanted to make sure the boat was set up so the three of us could um, could handle everything on it, you know. So we needed to set it up so we could get sails up and get them down. Um, you can't always plan when you're going to have to shorten sail, and um, so we needed to get it set it up. So well, let's talk about maybe the sails then. So what what sail package have you got on the boat? So we've got the uh, a big fully battened main, a pretty big overlapping genoa, because it's on a roller reef. You can pretty much make it whatever size you want. Right. And then we've got quite a big reacher, and as well as that, we've got an asymmetrical inner sock. Okay. Or a snuffer, I think. It's a pretty comprehensive sail package yeah. then. Yeah, and, but everything that you can do yourself. I changed the reacher so that we can actually use the electric winch on the deck. Oh, wow. To, to, so you can just stand there, uh, ease it out, and with your foot control the winch. And that, right. that made that a lot easier. It didn't have an electric winch when I bought the boat, so right. I fitted that on. Um, and I've got that set up so that I can run, bring any halyard or any reefing line to it, any, any rope on the boat up, up in here, I can bring to the electric winch right um but what the, the um which uh, when you get a big heavy batten mainsail um you can get your main up without right being totally uh, <laughs> so you're running your main halyard onto that electric winch yeah and the ability to reef yeah or any halyard onto any that halyard. winch you know right. the spinnaker yep um and um but, but also i can power reef okay and that's pretty important um before that was fitted uh sometimes if the wind came up in a hurry uh, my son and, ten, and my 10 year old son and I had often had quite a battle to, uh, well, we just, you'd have to drop the reacher on the deck actually, yeah, right. and then wait till you got to the next port to, yeah, <laughs> to, well, to furl it. Okay, so you've got an electric winch up, up front here. Yep. You've got two of the winches to help um, up on the mast here. Yep. So what are they running for um, reefs and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I changed the reefing line setups so that my son and I again could do the reefing easily because yep. he was only 10 at the time. How many reefs you got? Three reefs. Three reefs? Three yeah, reefing and, lines. And, and I have three reefing lines set up. Wow. Right. Okay, at all times. So okay. you, you don't have to, you know, say, um, as I've often had to do on other boats, uh, you, you pull a reef in and then you've got to actually go and reset up to, to, around, to, to pull the next around. one. Yeah, so um, I'm not a big fan of sheet bags, so I decided I wanted every rope to have a home. So I put snapper hooks all over the boat. Right. And every rope has a home. And including um, up on the boom here, capacity for every line to have a home. Okay. And because um, when you need to do something like that in a hurry, um, you don't want to be untangling ropes out of sheet bags. Yep. And it's the same uh, at the aft end of the boat. Uh, yep. no, all, all sheet bags have gone. <laughs> okay. And then so other um, rigging that you're running, so you've got electric winches back at the cockpit? No. No, manual winches. The manual winches the cockpit. The main winches at the, at the cockpit are uh, Selden two speed reversing winches. Right. So that you can actually ease your sails under full pressure without complex arrangements right. with so the you're clutches. Using that with the winch handle. Yeah, yeah. Either grinding on or grinding off. Yeah, you can do both ways. Okay. Right. Yeah. The Spirit of 380 is a pretty light boat, right? Yeah. I mean, you're talking about around five tonne, I suppose, is that right? That'd be right, yeah. Yeah, okay. So 
the, uh, wouldn't take a lot to get it accelerating. Yeah, they go, they go pretty well. Um, I have to say, most of the time, my wife was on the boat, but as soon as the speed started to get much above 10 knots, uh, she'd be talking about shortening sail. So the only time we ever really had it flying was once when I had a bunch of the guys from the sailing club uh, uh, bring it back from uh, Hamilton Island. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and I was uh, down in my bunk one night and I looked at the repeater and it said we're doing 18 knots and I, wa I wasn't real happy about that. <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess the point is that you can sail in lighter conditions too. Yeah. At a decent, decent pace. No, yeah, well, look, my wife is not a sailor and, um, and she was just happy on the whole journey. Yeah. 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 And so obviously the dagger boards are giving you some extra pointing as well. Yeah, yeah. That, look, that's why I wanted uh, a boat with dagger boards. I wanted a boat that could perform well. Um, when we first got the boat, it had um, some of the pulleys that doing their lifting and um, dropping were a bit complex and I got rid of all of that. I put on custom made carbon fibre controls uh, which have made the centre boards go up and down a lot easier. Right. So and and it was pressure. just a case of just had to be able to do stuff between me and a 10 year old. Mm. So it's really been optimised for short handed, easy, one or two people. Absolutely, so, yeah. That's good. And what about storage on the boat? I mean, where uh, do you put Things like it's, it's look it's got enormous storage um, on the uh, boat side it's actually got a walk-in robe that, in the front section then you've got your queen size bed and we've gone through two upgrades with our bedding initially we had just came with foam mattresses got rid of that put in the IKEA and then we ended up with the custom built mattresses for either side so they're the best you can get the bedding oh. um, then there's a super single down in the uh, starboard hole and then there's two shower, two bathrooms. Uh, one of the bathrooms is set up with a um, conventional to electric toilet. Electric toilet, yeah. It was manual initially. We changed that to electric. And uh, the other one was uh, electric toilet. Sorry, electric toilet through to a holding tank. Uh, I decided I didn't like fill with, filling with holding tanks, so we got rid of that. And we put in a composting toilet. Composting toilet. Yeah. Right. And what about odor? Is it? Uh, no. The um, it works off what. The composting toilet has is basically a fan computer size. It's always under negative pressure. Right. So there is no odor. Right. Wow. And that's actually part of the process of yeah. the composting process, drawing the air through. Yeah, that's interesting. They're becoming more of a, uh, a thing on sailing. I, I saw one on a monohull at Port Stephens and this guy was just raving about it. Right. And uh, so we decided to get one ourselves. Actually, we got one in our boat shed as well. Right, very cool. <laughs> Okay, and you also done a fair few other modifications to the boat internally and fit out wise, right? Ah, uh, yeah, a lot of tidying up. I mean, we we um, well, our previous boat we had a lot of water capacity, and when we got this boat, only had four hundred liters. Right. So we that's six hundred liters now, I think. Um, in terms of, um, oh, my wife only likes to drink filtered water, so we added a, a whole in sink, you know. You know filtered system so right. now at the at the main galley sink you've got hot water cold water salt water for rinsing and filled water yeah wow there's uh, storage under the bunks it wasn't there it was just vacant dead space when we first got the boat that's now set into accessible storage under both the queen size beds um, I have a, a wife who likes to carry a lot of um, a lot of spare items so our pantry capacity is quite big what an, I'd like you to show us through some of the, yeah. the features around the cockpit and the saloon. Sure. I think some really neat features, so let show us through. So, Michael, you've got a, a pretty uh, unique throttle control system here. Yeah, when we got the boat, it had conventional cable push-pull system. Um, but um, as soon as you start wanting to uh, manoeuvre in a marina or something like that, you really want a lot of control of your boat. Um, so we looked around and we got the KE4. Uh, electric electronic control system and it's fitted on both sides of the boat and um, the port side unit um, has got an extension cable and you can be, take it up to the bow which is actually pretty good when you're picking up a mooring or something like that because you can actually control the boat right so you can take the throttles way up to the bow now, i can be standing on the bow and i've done it and right. uh, and you just can maneuver it up to your mooring under power well, that's very neat and that's really handy um, also this one here so, um, so you can, you can, you can or... yeah, yeah, you can be uh, standing up, you know, quite high, um, or, over the boat. or or if you want to be down more sheltered if it's a bit blowy. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, so um, that was a really big improvement in terms of um, ability and confidence mm. to handle the boat uh, mm. more in tight mooring spaces, marinas, etc. And what motors are you running on the boat? It's got the uh, Yanmar's. Uh, 20 horsepower. 20 horsepower, Yanmar with sail drive. Yeah, sail drive. Yeah. What sort of engine is? Do you know? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have that statistic on our, uh, yeah. our inventory. And these are the reverse winches back here that we we're Yeah, they're the about. Selden reversing winches, um, which means you can basically, the, the Jandawa is pretty big. It means you can trim it under load, and that means not just pulling it on, but it can ease it under load. And yeah. that's, that's a handy feature. So uh, everything's pretty close back here, isn't it? I mean, you've got. Yeah. Is yeah, it, it had switch? to be, and I mean, the boat, our experience was that I had to be able to sail the boat with a 10 year old son mm. and my wife who was only ever going to be able to hold the helm and that was mm. it. Mm. Um, it's got auto helm, so mm. you can um, yeah. engage that pretty easily. Yeah, and as far as electronics, so uh, autopilot, uh, so you've got a GPS chart plotter. Yeah, and um, a twin actually. Twin, right. Yeah. Right, so one inside. Yeah, one inside, yeah. Okay. And the one inside Wi-Fi to your phone if you want to. <laughs> right. And obviously winds and depth and long. Wind and depth and, and all that. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. And that's uh, Raymarine. It's yeah. all Raymarine. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And then you've also done some mods, sort of the internals as well. And I notice there's a big. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fridge chest um, here. We already had a hundred liters, or nearly a hundred liters inside, and then we wanted a fridge freezer, so we put in this Waco unit. Wow, that's huge! And um, it's got a really big capacity in terms of freezer. That's probably and the fridge. biggest fridge freezer I've seen on a 38, 40 yeah, foot cow. Well, we tend to not go out for the weekend, but go out for a few weeks, right? And and uh, typically. Well, each year we used to spend up four to six weeks up there around the Hawkesbury floating around. Yep. And um, we discovered if we found a nice mooring, we didn't want to move. So we <laughs> wanted everything on yeah. the boat we could yeah. keep. Um, yeah. So um, we actually expanded the inside fridge a bit and then put this in as well. Okay, well, um, why don't you show us inside the boat? Yeah. Can you see what you've got inside? Yeah, so this is the other half of our fridge and freezer system. Oh, wow. So that's. Um, that's quite a large fridge on its own capacity. So what's the capacity of that? that About 70, be... I think. Right, and similar <laughs> by two outside? Yeah, yeah 90 outside, yeah. 90 outside, right, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, because we yeah. like to be able to go for a while without yeah. having to uh, to go back into the shops. Mm. And then you set up a little mini office here? Yeah, I did, yeah. I wanted to be able to work from the boat, so, um, I, and um, these days you don't use your chart table so much for looking at charts. Mm. But um, so I had some extra shelves added there for my work stuff. Uh, I've, got, I've got storage under the seat. Yep. And I decided to fit a more little comfortable seat for myself yep. to work backrest. from. Yeah. Yep. Uh, over here at the sink, we've got hot and cold running water, conventional, fresh water, uh, salt water for uh, being, being able to do rinsing of your dishes, things like that without using your fresh water. And then my wife's quite fussy about her water, so we had to put in a filtered water unit as well. Excellent. So we've got all of that, and the double sink, of course. A little microwave. Yeah, we added the microwave. Um, and gas and stove and yeah, gas yeah, oven. Yeah, three burner. Not the, not the sun, oh, but it's wow. only got the two burners. So yep. three burner and the gas oven, yeah. And um, we, it, that world works really well. This is quite a nice opening here too with that drop down yeah, window. Yeah, that's lovely. Like you get this uh, flow through. Yeah. You know, so um, from your top window there, your front window there, and then this flow through. And it couldn't not only that communication. Mm. So you you can talk. Yeah. If you're at the helm yeah, to people real, inside the boat. Nice indoor outdoor effect. And I'm I'm six foot three. It's actually uh, the quite head, a lot of headroom. The clearances and it's the same in the holes. It's the same clearance in well, the holes. Yeah. For a thirty eight footer, that's, yeah. that's good good headroom clearance. Yeah. And uh, and is this the interior as it, it always was? Yes, or? it yes it is. Yeah. It's quite quite a tidy um, finish, simple but stylish. Yeah, yeah, it's quite comfortable. And you know, um, sometimes when I when we've been doing a quick trip with extra crew, um, I, I, they obviously uh, use this to sleep in. <laughs> mm. oh, and that's the repeater unit. Oh, it's not a repeater. It's it's a standalone unit, but it's linked to the other chart plotter unit. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and that one has the Wi-Fi capability. Okay, and uh, so up forward in the cabins, you've got two. Uh, is it queen beds? Double yeah, beds? oh yeah, queen size beds. Um, and um, 
they're the, the, the mattresses are the top of the line. My wife is a very fussy sleeper. Yep. So we had uh, several changes of uh, mattress. And, right. But, um, I think we've got as, as good and as expensive as you can go right now. Yeah. And underneath both of the queen size beds, there's a lot of extra storage as well. There's a fusion sound system throughout the boat, mm -hmm. and um, you can play the music straight off your iPhone. Right, or, you so know, Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah. Bluetooth, um, yeah. So. And the, uh, the Dagobord cases aren't too intrusive in the hull either. No, well, and in fact, um, what we've done on um, the starboard side is added a lot more shelving. Right. Behind it, so it can increase the storage again. My wife loves storage. Okay. Right. And uh, on the uh, port side hole, you've actually got a walk-in robe at the front. Excellent. So Michael, um, tell us about your electrics on the boat. Uh, um, yeah, well, well like we, we expanded the solar uh, panels. Right. Um, and then the, um, the house batteries is 1,200 amp hours. 1,200 amp hours of AGM house, house batteries. AGM house batteries. Right. And, and they're how old are they? They're about two to three years old. Right. Okay, so not and then the same, and then we, um, it was set up with one engine start battery, but we've changed it so that there's one engine start battery for each engine. Right. And they're AGM batteries. Okay. Uh, and obviously they're more focused on cranks, uh, crank amps, yep. than, uh, than, than, uh, than storage amps. Yeah. Um, and then solar? And everything can be cross-switched if, if something... You right. want, something happens to one battery. So you can emergency parallels. Yeah, you can emergency parallels parts. or whatever you want. Um, okay. And uh, sorry, solar, uh, you've got a decent array of solar. Yeah, we've got uh, solar panels on the roof yep. and then solar panels over the back davits. Running anything as far as inverters or? Yeah, yeah, out? we're running a, um, I think it's a 1300 uh, watt inverter. Uh, that one, that was on the boat when we came, pure sine wave, obviously. Yep. The battery, the battery charge is in there and the uh, regulator for the solar panels. If you'd like more information on the Spirited 380, click here to download an information pack. To watch more videos, click here.